name's Mark Blackaby. I'm a professor here at Oxford. Um, um, my my research area is is topology, particularly low dimensional topology. So I work um, one of my areas of expertise, and what this project is on is on on knots, which are just closed curves in three dimensional space, um, which have a surprisingly rich theory um, associated with. Well, um, they approached me um, in early 2019, and um, they uh, decide, had decided that they wanted to try to help um, mathematics and mathematicians uh, come up with new ideas. And they were really very open-minded about how they did that. And we investigated um, uh, various different projects, but we hit on um, what we think is a, is a really useful collaboration between um, mathematics and machine learning. Well, so they're quite different fields and they don't naturally collaborate or interact with each other. Um, and I think um, machine learning has been used to create mathematical theorems, but without the input of a mathematician to say what's interesting and what's not, um, I think that the progress there has been fairly limited in the past. Um, and it, machine learning has also been used to um, find patterns in mathematics, and we'll talk a little bit about that, how, which is what we've done. Um, but in, again, in the absence of um, a mathematician being able to interpret those patterns, um, progress has been limited. So I don't think before this there have been too many really useful applications of machine learning to mathematics. What machine learning is really good at is um, in is finding patterns. So, you know, if you take a, uh, a picture of a um, street sign and a car, it will be able to, uh, given enough training, work out which one's the car and which one is the street sign. Um, but this is a hugely widely applicable set of tools and it can be applied to mathematics. So um, uh, in my particular project, we were looking at knots and there's now a really well-developed theory of knots and associated with each knot, there are hundreds of different mathematical quantities. Um, so for example, um, uh, there are um, polynomials that you can associate with knots. There are geometric quantities, such as volume, that you can associate with knots. And our particular project was to try to find and then prove um, the existence of unexpected patterns between these different quantities. Um, and um, it turned out to be successful. So, and what's particularly interesting is that Knot theory actually has many different, quite distinct branches. Um, so there's the branch that I work on more, which is using non-Euclidean geometry. Um, there's a different branch which creates, relates more to four dimensions and some of the invariants associated with that, which is sort of more algebraic in nature. And what was unknown before this was the existence of any real connection between these different branches of knot theory. And what we did was we discovered that there were patterns. So in particular, some quantities, one particular quantity that you can associate with a knot, its signature, um, which is a four-dimensional inspired quantity, relates, can be read off in terms of more geometric uh, invariance. Um, and before that, there had been no real connection between those two areas. So initially, what we discovered was that you could read off the signature in terms of these other geometric quantities. Um, but then we managed to home in on an actual conjecture relating the signature to the geometric quantities. And then with more work and a good deal of 
careful examination of the data, we were actually able to prove uh, conjecture. And so um, by using the techniques for machine learning to find patterns and to home in on patterns, uh, we were actually able finally to prove the existence of pattern, these patterns mathematically, um, which I think is, uh, I hope, will be of independent mathematical interest. Mathematicians have been using computers for many, many years, and uh, computers are great at creating huge amounts of data. Um, and then the difficulty is analyzing that data, seeing the patterns in that data. And sometimes the patterns can be fairly near the surface, um, and sometimes they require considerable more depth. And in this particular case, we were looking at say 50 different quantities, geometric, algebraic quantities associated with the knot. And just by eyeballing the data, you wouldn't be able to, to detect those patterns. And using, say, linear regression, it would have been hard to spot those patterns. And what machine learning is really good at is being able to pick out nonlinear relationships between quantities um, in um, which a human would be otherwise unable to do. Uh, well, it definitely does. So um, uh, there was um, myself and Andres Huhash, uh, also from Oxford, we were working on uh, this knot theory project. But there was also uh, Jordi Williamson um, from Sydney, who um, is, uh, was doing a project on representation theory, also using machine learning techniques in collaboration with DeepMind. Um, but it's pretty clear that these techniques are, are really quite general, and I'm quite confident that they will be really quite widely applicable. Well, I hope that they will judge the mathematical output on its own merits. Um, I, I'm actually very excited about this new connection between the algebraic and geometric aspects of knot theory. I think. Um, uh, I think that's a, an interesting new development of interest in its own right. Um, but I hope that also mathematicians will see that the opportunity to spot unexpected connections makes the subject more interesting and um, it provides a set of tools that haven't previously been available to us. So I do hope that um, mathematicians like not just the mathematics, but also the prospect of being able to use these tools in the future.